Welcome to Access a Trader, the number one community for those who are committed to taking control of their trading in order to achieve success, profitability, and longevity. Thank you for joining us. Here's Dan Shapiro to help you find your edge, master your process, and own your future. Hey guys, good evening everybody. Welcome to uh, another edition of uh, the AccessToTrader.com uh, nightly wrap-up show. So what we're looking at right now is yesterday's trading day, okay? Um, I personally thought before that China announcement, you know, uh, almost the deal done, maybe not, almost a deal done, part of the deal done, blah, blah, blah. The market looked really good yesterday, okay? And all we kept on talking about was, well, I think the market's going to go higher, but again, we need the confirmation. Okay, don't overthink, don't guess. We're not in the whole guessing business. That was the whole mantra for, for, for yesterday. And lo and behold, the market was looking great, 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 great after one o'clock. And then slowly but surely, right, the China news came out and this was like kind of the first dent. And the next thing you know, the market, you know, really, really tanked. Okay, uh, so we came very, very close. Okay. Uh, the one thing that I talked about this morning was when we opened down uh, 200, 300, whatever it was, 200 points or so, I kept on saying, you know what, I want to give the bull the benefit of the doubt, okay? Uh, if no China news came out yesterday, I thought we would have rallied into the close. More important, I thought we were going to at least confirm, make that first incision on, off that 190 area in the queues and test that very, very important 190.58 level that I said needs to confirm. None of that happened. So if this was 10, 15 years ago, um, I would have been long overnight in anticipation of a rally, I would have gotten killed, okay? Uh, but one thing, I got smarter, okay? Again, we don't, we're not in the guessing business, we're in the confirmation business. Um, so this morning during, during morning strategy, and as the market was kind of drifting lower, drifting lower, and at some point it got down you know, 300 and change, all I kept on saying was, look how strong everything is. Roku's strong, Netflix is strong, Tesla's strong, uh, Facebook was strong, Apple was strong. These stocks are not going down. They're not going down. We have to give the bulls the benefit of the doubt. Again, nobody's talking about macro breakout, but at least let's watch these things. And if they start confirming, if the market gets better, okay, I think everything will be fine. And little by little, right? Little by little, and you can see what happened today, right? Little by little. So you had uh, the close yesterday, okay, and then you had the gap down. You'll see this in a second. Uh, you'll have the gap down, right? You'll have the gap down this morning, right? Gap down this morning in futures. And then little by little, okay, things started improving. Okay, little by little, here's after, after the opening, we have to show you. So little by little, things started improving, okay? And then ultimately, the market starts breaking out, and everything is all good, right? We went from down 300 to being down 60, 70 points, okay? And again, I had my whole game plan already for tomorrow. Uh, Tesla, we'll talk about that in a second. Really, really great pivot today. Uh, and Tesla, I know a lot of you guys did very, very well. I like Tesla going into tomorrow. And I like Netflix going in for the macro confirmation. And Roku looked good. And look at Apple. Everything looks good. Everything looks great. Again, not at the confirmation level, but everything at least looks good that, again, if they could trap late, uh, late shorts tomorrow morning, everything looked good. So what happened again today? So Powell starts talking, okay? And then he starts talking about uh, the Fed buying T-bills, but let's not get ahead of ourselves. It's not gonna be another QE. We're just going to artificially inseminate the economy, but it's all good, it's all good. It's not, it's not like we used to do back then. Don't worry about it, don't worry. And the market liked that news, right? The market liked that news and everything started moving higher. Everything started going good. The problem with Bernie, with the problem with Powell, he speaks on both sides of his mouth, right? When you had uh, Bernanke, when you had Yellen, Greenspan, right? They made their you know they made their stake and they stood to it. This guy Powell, he's like, well, everything will be good unless it's not. That's basically what he does. So his first sentence is everything will be good, and then his last sentence is maybe until until it's not. And the market went from down only 60, right? We, we, we made back 250 points off the lows. Everything was going good. And next thing you know, this guy's talking about, well, maybe, maybe it's not. Maybe it's recession, blah, blah, blah. And the market got destroyed, right? Market got absolutely destroyed uh, into the close. So what, what it basically did was, and again, if, you, uh, if, you, you know, if you've been watching these updates nightly, 
we avoided two things. Okay, we avoided great setups to the upside two days in a row because of news. And now, okay, let me just show you on TC2000. And now we are da, 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 right back into this range, right? Right back into this range. We got rejected yesterday. I got that. Again, I wanted to give the bulls the benefit of the doubt only because, uh, only because we went down yesterday because of this China news and China rumor or China no news, whatever the case may be. So now we are in the bottom back of this range. Here's the most ironic part. This morning, okay, when you look at the NASDAQ 100, okay, this morning, there wasn't even a fight at the 50-day moving average, okay? It tested the 50-day moving average, reclaimed it, and ran up about $2 above the 50-day, right? The most ironic part is on the way back down, it's like the 50-day wasn't even there, and we went right th through below it. So right now, guys, we are right in the middle of the channel. Okay, and if you're seeing if you're seeing your activity level being tamed in the last two days, you're not alone. Okay, you're not alone because again, any professional trader will look for an advantageous playing field, and if there's not, well, again, we don't sit there trying to recreate the wheel. We're not there to uh, you know to try to squeeze water out of a rock. We're there to wait for the next good opportunity. Nobody's saying great opportunity, but good opportunity. And the most important part is, you know, the market doesn't care that you're eager to trade. Again, if you're eager to trade, you're emotionally not there yet, okay? You think you are, but you're not. If you wake up every single morning and you're dying to trade, you're emotionally not ready to be a professional trader. You're just not, okay? When you are at the point of your career that if it comes today, that's great. If it comes tomorrow, that's fantastic. If it comes next Wednesday, that's good to, as well. That's when you're emotionally have checked out, right? You're emotionally checked out. Uh, you have zero expectations. I say this all the time. When you have zero expectations, you have zero disappointments. So every single day, I you know, obviously do my research, see how things play out pre-market, and see where the value is. And there is no value. I have no problem pulling everybody off the ledge, okay, who is dying to trade. The dying to trade crowd is the novice crowd, less than two, three years, got their first little bit of capital, are ready to go on their own, the 20 something that's ready to prove something themselves. But what they're doing is they're emotionally invested, their emotional levels are rising, and all they're doing is disappointing themselves, especially when you are trading in a contracting market and a headline market that at any given point, technical analysis will be thrown out the window and your neighborhood Spider Man, right, or your neighborhood Trump Man, or anybody in between from China, they will spill cold water on your emotional uh, excitement. So you got to understand that. So when you have a market that's in the middle of the range, you have to act accordingly. Okay. We're not busting out. We're not breaking out. It's like, I tell you, know, it's like the, it's like I asked the kid, well, you know, Dan, when, it's like the kid asked me, well, Dan, you know, I, I don't short stocks. I only buy, you know, I only buy breakouts. So I asked him, I go, well, what happens, what happens when the market goes down? And he goes, what do you mean? Right. This is a, a time that you have to build your foundation, okay? Patience is not just a loose word that people throw around. Patience is real, okay? And it matters. And again, if you are running a restaurant, okay, you can't expect the same aggressive crowd to come in Thursday, Friday, and Saturday, and you wake up Monday morning and you're disappointed that there is no, you know, uh, packed restaurant to the gills because it's Monday, you know, because it's Monday evening, again. Okay. It's different intervals. Your business will run at different times, have strengths, have weaknesses. But going into tomorrow, again, when you look at the headlines and now you look at the technical damage that we closed below the 50-day moving average, we literally went from one day, almost one day to confirming back, not only in the middle of the range, but back below the 50-day moving average. And going into tomorrow, I had, I had a completely different day. I mean, a completely different day lined up for us going into tomorrow. And now I'm, I'm, you know, I did my chart work. The semiconductors are on the chopping block. They look like they look terrible. Okay, they look absolutely terrible. The China names look horrible. Amazon looks terrible. The casinos look terrible. You have, you have literally, we've gone in 24 hours for a potential confirmation on this upper channel here. So all of a sudden, on the way down, now looking for shorts. And again, I got some good shorts lined up for tomorrow. But isn't it amazing, right? Isn't it amazing that? how things can change very, very quickly. And I say this all the time, you don't need to trade every day, okay? You could trade, take a couple of trades and you'll be fine. 
But the most important part is when you're looking for a big measure potential, you're either going to need the top of that channel to be confirmed or the bottom of the channel to confirm and everything to go, not just one by one. Uh, and if you look at today's session, again, you know, we had several good moves, right? We had several good moves. The first Tesla move, and again, this is what's called uh, experience. Uh, you know, again, here's the first Tesla move today. Um, hold on, let me see. Oh, where are we? Um, here's the Tesla, first Tesla move today. Um, where are we? Where are we? Where are we? So let's start out with Beyond, okay? I Here's the most amazing part. BYND is now the king, the absolute king of PRs, okay? Last week with McDonald's, today with Carl's Jr., and again, nobody cares. They keep on selling the PR. And every single time it comes down, somebody holds it up. God knows why. You have no reason to buy the stock. Zero reason. It keeps on getting rejected on upgrades. Now it keeps on getting rejected on PRs. And oh, by the way, you have a lockup coming in at towards the end of October. And the most amazing part of it is they still can't crack this thing. Again, any day in this lifetime or the next. Um, Netflix, you know, not a bad move on Netflix. Uh, you know, not a bad move on Netflix. You know, spiked up about a dollar and change. Again, nothing crazy there. This is, you know, this is the trade, right? This is the trade here. Tesla, uh, we got long initially, right? We got long initially. It only went up like 50, 60 cents. I saw it stall out, right? So I made some sales, broke even on the rest. But here is the pivot here that the continuation move, the 38, 75, 39, it exploded. I mean, absolutely exploded. And I only thought it was going to get to 241. So I said, hey, guys, 241. Exit stage left, right? Everything is all good. This Netflix, I mean, this Tesla just exploded, just absolutely exploded. I know some of you guys kept the runner, but boy, oh boy, this thing went went absolutely nuts. So here's, you know, here's the sneaky pivot. Here was the original original high. It came back in and reclaimed it and just exploded uh, to this two, 243 level. This is actually the only one that I actually like long for tomorrow. Everything else I like uh, on the short side, but it's amazing, absolutely amazing that again, we sat there all day waiting for spots. And then again, you just never know when something's going to fall in your lap. So again, you're not looking for trades. You're looking for the trades to find you. And again, there is no guarantee. Okay. There is no guarantee. You're going to get that big aggressive move that you want in the specific inter interval that you want, or even the specific day. Again, the market is going to be here 200, 500, 800 years after you're long gone. But again, it's not about you want to trade, it's about you wanting to trade properly. And that's very, very important. So on markets like this, because everything's in the middle of the range, you want to make sure you're much more selective, less active, and trying to take as much cash flow as you can when, you know, when uh, a situation uh, presents itself. Uh, obviously, Roku never confirmed down, which is amazing that it rallied today, because again, it couldn't rally yesterday on the PR news of Walmart. So just a crazy market, just an absolute crazy market. Uh, H E L E. I don't think it got up here. Um, I don't think Helen Detroit got up there to 71. Now I wasn't even watching it to begin with. Uh, Domino's, uh, D P Z never got down to 25. Like I said here, here it is very tight session. Sit tight. Um, Amazon flush at the close. I know some of you guys emailed me after the close. I was already gone, gone by then. Uh, 1713. It needs a strong bill lower to flush. You know, Amazon looks lower, right? Amazon does look lower. Um, again, it took out that, uh, here was the 1714. It took out and flushed down uh, to the 1705 area. Again, I think it looks lower for tomorrow. Um, yeah, I mean, here it is. You know, Tesla waking up, start making sales, uh, blah, blah, blah. So the most important thing, right? The most important thing here um, is for tomorrow's session, trying to get the better value. Again, if you if you ask me going into tomorrow's session, again, like we gave the bulls the benefit of the doubt today, how do you not get the bears the benefit of the doubt tomorrow? And again, if you look at all the semiconductors, right? Just look at all the semi names, right? They're all about to collapse. One more day of confirmation, the video. Again, anything to do with China, anything to do uh, with manufacturing in China is going to get killed. And if you look at the SMHs, right? And if you look at the SMHs, again, they're literally one day of really, really falling apart. So uh, going into tomorrow, I am, I have to say, you have to be sell biased until it's proven different. Uh, so let me give you guys some ideas uh, for tomorrow's session uh, that look pretty good. Congratulations uh, for putting in the time to take control of your trading. You're one step closer to owning your future and achieving the success you desire.
Want daily trade ideas directly from Dan, straight off his personal watch list? Unlock our free PS60 Vault, where you'll get nightly updates on pivot opportunities we're watching for the next day's session. Click the link in the description to get started today. Thank you.